So now I'm going to make a checker pattern and apply to the mesh and see where the distortion is. So you can see in the center near the nose and the lips there's a lot of distortion. So I'll start relaxing and pushing them. And there's some distortion on the corner near the eyes where, I, where it, the eyes were stitched. That will have to be fixed too. So now a good idea is always you select the face and you see the face on the 3D mesh and how the face looks on the UV mapping and try to make sure the shape of the face matches on both sides, even if it's not the same size, at least matches. And then always relax. Make sure there's a nice flow everywhere. Also, I've realized the character has a very big chin. And it's all compressed on a very small space. So that's something I'll have to go in, probably detach some faces, relax them, and put them back in. So now I'm selecting the faces and getting them. You see how the, the level of distortion they had. So stitch them back. And then align the other faces next to it. And relax. And the same for the bottom. There's a lot of distortion there, so I'll break, take them away, fix the distortion. and then reattach everything again. And you can see now the huge distortion that I had for the chin area and how I'm increasing the space I have for the big chin of the character. So I'm going to pull this down and make sure there's enough room. You can also see I start to get a lot of space, so I can use that space to make sure I get enough resolution near the jaw area. There's some stretching on the neck, but that's not too bad, because if you see the size of the polygons I have there, there's so much space for resolution, and then the ZBrush will handle the distortion, so it's not much of an issue. Make sure you look for problems like this, like when you have some edges that are incorrect. Vertices, sorry. Now I want to make sure the lips have enough room. And I'll place the rest of the parts. Work on the ear now. Just saving the UV layout very quickly, just in case something goes wrong. And relax. Push. Soft selection. About the same. Making sure the layout of the ear, the border, matches as much the original as possible and then just make sure that every single face has enough room to be painted on. And 
this is the inside of the mouth. Also just realize that I want to make sure the stitching is on the border so when I do symmetry on the model everything matches. So I'm going to stitch differently so the border is on the same side. And then relax to get some really good space. And then soft selection and push out the edges. And then center the side again. I'm going to see if it fits here. I'm going to do some mirror. Both sides fit so it's perfect and keep it there. And now that the symmetry is ready, I'm gonna divide half half, do symmetry, pass to the other side and stitch the two halves, and then do a pass to make sure there's no big distortions or problems somewhere. So I weld the middle. I can see the nose is a bit too stretched. So what I might do is I might do a render to texture just to see how the texture will show up later on. If there's any major thing that I should fix. So I save the view layout and I'm gonna do the technique I've been using for the props. I'll quickly apply a skylight, turn on light trace, and render to texture. We can also try something I'll do later, which is just do a quick render and see the specular. Because the specular reflections really help to see if the curve is okay. So we can see here on the render that the nose is a bit too stretched and I would like to leave him a bit more breathing room between the nose and the eyes. But still it's quite important to get the curve of the nose so I'm just gonna try to work symmetrically push the nose slightly inwards and then relax the corners to compensate for the distortion. So I'll just relax those edges and that should be good enough. I'll render again. And yeah, that looks good. So now the next step is to do some specular renders and then I'm going to detach the head. It will be its own unique mesh so it's ready to work on ZBrush. So we'll select the head mesh. We're going to detach. Rename it as head. And I'm going to do the same technique I did before, which is I'm going to separate the jaws and separate the ears and the eyes so I can create polygroups making it much much easier to edit the mesh. And since now we're working in high resolution there's going to be a lot of detail going on and a lot of polygons so it's very good to have these selection groups. So as long as each one is on the 0-1 group of the UV layout I've also separated the upper and lower jaw uh, sorry upper and lower inside of the mouth into different UV groups This will also allow me to very easily do some morph targets for the head. And we're going to save the mesh and export as OBJ and start our work on ZBrush. <laughs> 